Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi, I'm Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. I'm Dr. Russell Knudsen. Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Right, so uh, today, in today's episode, we want to talk about, uh, again, finasteride or 5-alpha reductase inhibitors more uh, generically. There's two of them. Yes, yes the finasteride and dutasteride. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot being written on the internet and you get a lot of people getting concerned about, right, well, what are the side effects of, of these medications and what will it do to, to my uh, sperm or, or semen? Uh, will there be any long-term effects of this? And I'm a bit worried about it. And so I thought we'd spend a bit of time sort of unpacking that and going, right, okay, well, is it, uh, you know, much do about nothing is it, uh, or is there something to be specifically concerned about. So let's go back to the original trials mm -hmm. uh, on it and they were men between the ages of 18 and 41 and they were carefully screened before treatment to make sure that they had normal sperm, sperm numbers yes. and normal sperm motility. The two things that are important, right? The, you need to have the sperm that can uh, move, which is motility, and you need to have sufficient numbers uh, for fertility to be good. And um, in the trial of uh, 2,000 men, 1,000 on finasteride, 1,000 on uh, placebo, uh, there were no significant effects on sperm numbers or sperm motility, but they'd been pre-screened uh, for that purpose. In the real life, of course, when patients come into us for treatment, we have no way of doing of knowing that for sure that they uh, they have those. Uh, and I don't routinely screen. No. I just say to patients that if you have normal fertility, uh, it's not going to be a problem. What evidence has become available to us over the last 20 years is that if you have borderline, borderline low numbers or low motility, that can be negatively impacted by use of 5 alpha reductase. So finasteride or dutasteride can negatively impact that. And of course, we do have to, to counsel patients who are coming in, for example, that are um, uh, about to commence uh, IVF, for example, mm. with a partner. And so you know, I, my advice is to them, I don't routinely screen them unless they ask for it, uh, which I'm happy to do. Um, but if they are concerned about the impact upon them wanting to start a family, I tell them to stop the medicine a month uh, before they start uh, uh, trying um, uh, to conceive. Uh, because I want it cleared out of the system yes. um, so that, uh, that there's no particular effect then on, um, on sperm parameters if it's cleared from their system. And I think that, that highlights the important point there, which was that there was no long-term effect of this, which is that once uh, the medication was out of your system, things returned back to, to, to baseline. So That's it right. wasn't a permanent effect from, from that perspective. But uh, I wanted to then the next sort of follow up from that is well, does dose have an impact in terms of you know effect on on motility? Because one of the studies I saw was was looking at five milligrams of finasteride per day. The, the other arm of the study was also looking at dutasteride, which was 0.5 of a milligrams uh, per day. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly, if we look at finasteride dosing, and we've done a video on microdosing of, of finasteride, mm. five milligrams a day is a huge, huge dose, and certainly far greater than what we would normally prescribe uh, routinely. Yes, because the dose response curve sort of flattens off around one milligram. So yeah. you might ask yourself, well, why are you using five? Well, is five better than one? But five was originally designed for people with enlarged prostates. Yes. And as I understand it, the only difference between the one milligram dose and the five milligram dose was symptomatically men who used the higher dose had less urgency, urine urgency, and didn't have a different effect upon you know, other parameters of controlling that prostatic enlargement. Yes. So I think the short answer is that if you're concerned, by all means, do a semen analysis before you commence treatment. Um, because if it's normal, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, if you have borderline low um, semen to start with, then you might want to think about how you're going to manage that process if you want to use finasteride. So how well. would you, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Well, then what Well, I think then in that situation, you might, um, you know, you might take some um, sperm and you might freeze it. Yeah. Right. Or look at other, other treatment options. Well, I mean, some people um, take uh, other medicines to increase their fertility uh, right. with the fertility specialist. Um, and again, you could get that second opinion, couldn't you, from yes. the uh, fertility specialist saying, okay, I've got borderline low parameters, 
yeah, what are my options here? How do I make sure that I'm not going to damage myself by taking finasteride sure. in the medium term? Sorry, what I meant was that we, you'd be then going, right, okay, well, let's look at, uh, say, stimulation therapy as being yes. your main line yes. uh, in terms of trying Exactly, to being quite specific about it. But I, I think that's a point. Um, you know, I'm not going to screen everybody. Yes. Because, you know, that's, that, that's just an excessive amount of testing uh, for a lot of people that are going to be quite normal. But I think that if you uh, have previous history or you have concerns, I think that's very reasonable. I think that if you are found to have low, uh, low parameters, then the importance of a discussion with a fertility specialist yeah. before you commence treatment is also important. Good. All right. Well, I think that, that, that hopefully un, um, uh, clears up some of that sort of misconception that it is, oh, you know what, it's going to cause me problems well, this in is, everyone. Well, this, this is part of the problem with um, either 5 alpha reductase inhibitors is that people come and say, I don't want to use them because I hear that everybody gets side effects. Well, the short answer is no, everybody doesn't get side effects. In, in the trial, it was less than 2% for any side effect. Uh, and even for people that commenced um, or stayed on their medicine after they got a, um, a side effect, for example, a sexual side effect, 60% of them lost the side effect when their body adjusted to the new levels. Mm. So it is a very small percentage of people to get any side effects whatsoever, but we keep coming up with reasons for patients to be worried about using it, you know, the effects on brain fog, the effects on depression, the effects on sperm motility, you know. Um, there's a lot of reasons that people get uh, nervous about it, but the great majority of people have nothing to worry about. Good. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. I think that was a really uh, important discussion to have. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And thank you. Keep liking, keep subscribing. It's great to talk to you. See ya. Bye.